All right, welcome back. I'm joined again by Jason Johnson, political science professor at Hiram College and CNN political commentator Anna Navarro. We've been talking about Donald Trump's latest controversial comments, which actually got him booted from this weekend's conservative gathering in Atlanta held by RedState.com. Trump also is refusing to say whether he might run as an independent candidate, telling our Don Rem Lemon last night this. Why can't you just say, no matter if it's a man or woman, no matter who the nominee is, that you're going to support the Republican nominee, no matter who it may because be? Because I don't choose to do so, Don. That's all. I mean, what, do you, what difference is it to you? I don't choose to do so. Mm -hmm. uh, I will probably at some point do that. But I'm only looking forward to one thing, and that's to running as a Republican and winning as a Republican. If you run as a third-party candidate, the concern Republicans is that from the Republicans is that you're going to hand it over to whoever the Democratic person, whether it's Hillary Clinton. Hey, or Don, don't worry about it. Okay, that's yeah. not your problem. Okay, that's not your problem. So <laughs> I, that, what happens? What happens is, uh, I, you know, I look. I'm leading as a Republican. Obviously, it's better to run as a Republican. Mm -hmm. But I'm leading as a Republican. That's what my choice is, and. If I'm treated fairly and with respect, uh, I, and even if I don't get it, I would, you know, most likely go ahead and not do that. Yeah. But if, on the other hand, I'm not, I might very well might. Now, at some point, I may switch over and make everybody happy, and mm -hmm. I'd be happy also. Yeah. I will say, with, with that being said, I'm being ve treated very nicely by the RNC mm -hmm. and rights and everybody. They're treating yeah. me very nicely. And, that's basically what I want. I want a, I want a level playing field. Yeah. And if I get a level playing field fairness, then it's highly unlikely that I do the other, which would be you would call a third party. All right, Jason and Anna, back with me now. All right, so Jason, you first. How would you describe, what were the words you would use to describe uh, how Donald Trump conducted himself in that exchange with Don Lemon? He sounds irritated. And, and I mean, part of it is because that's, generally speaking, Donald Trump's personality. And partially, I think there's some legitimate concern. This is kind of like saying, so when you don't make the playoffs, what are you going to do? When you don't make the Super Bowl, he's saying, look, would you let me run? Let, let's figure this out after and Iowa. And he said for a very long time that he believes he's going to win the nomination. Exactly. He's in it to win it. Exactly. So I think, I think the questions of are you going to run for a third party, I think he's a bit annoyed with that for, for somewhat good reason. But at the same well, time, Anna, he's already made the inference early on that he could potentially leave the party if right, he it. felt like he needed to. And so now he is being asked that again, and he seems to be irritated, which is the word you use, irritated about the question. Well, I thought he was irritated. I thought he was short. I thought he was condescending to Don. And I think that he doesn't like to be asked questions. He just likes to talk with no filter. It's a very different perspective when you are a mm -hmm. Republican. And you sit there wondering to yourself, well, why is he attending? Why, why are we giving him all this publicity? Why are we letting him speak to Republican voters? Why is he coming to events like this if he is not saying that he's not going to run a third party? Remember, this is a guy who has limitless money, mm -hmm. uh, is also a very good friend, has been a good friend of the Clintons, has mm -hmm. given them large amounts of money, is taking political advice from Bill Clinton. Mm -hmm. So I would tell you, it would make a lot of reasonable Republicans nervous to think we are making this guy a bigger brand, we are giving him more political platforms to speak at, and he's not telling us that he's not going to go and hand over the presidency to Hillary Clinton but by running at the same time, party. he is, while he's being blamed, he's also getting credit for bringing up issues right. that other Republicans, supporters, and either other contenders have said we like this. We like that we're now talking about immigration because of his comments that still Fred, insulted many. Not, people have been talking about immigration anything. from day one. It, just, it was in a completely different manner than the way he has but done he's it. Nobody at the was top, but he's, top of the, yes. he's at the top of yeah, the polling. And so the way he's bringing these things up or the or topics he's bringing up certainly is, you know, winning him favor. Yeah, he's leading in the polls for a reason. He's not being given anything by the Republican Party. No, the, there are Republican voters who actually like what he has to say. The, and, and if somebody doesn't like him running for a third party, then let Jeb beat him and let Scott beat him. Let someone else beat him rather than worrying about him running as a third party candidate. Right, but the point is, what if he gets beat and then runs if he's not pledging not to run? Look, he, what he's doing is tapping into the anger, the frustration that so many American voters have with the dysfunction that's going on in Washington. There are a plethora, you know, you pick it, of issues that are not getting addressed and people are frustrated, are angry, are worried, are concerned, are fearful, mm -hmm. and he's tapping into that. And that, that word unfiltered you used earlier, that's also why he's winning such great support. Because so they see why him should as... he suddenly become filtered? Well, nobody's suggesting. <laughs> Listen, I don't, I'm not sure that he could. I don't think anybody should suggest that he be filtered because I'm not sure that Trump is capable of filtering what goes between his brain and his mouth.
The RNC says he needs to apologize. This is somebody who's already said he has no regrets. Uh, you know, a, a apology is not something that we should expect from Donald Trump, and then he wouldn't be as unfiltered as he is. So exactly. what is the expectation moving forward? Well, redstate.com is able to disinvite him. Uh, the RNC, any upcoming political debate, they can't. Mm -hmm. And we don't know whether the poll number, his poll numbers, uh, you know, will take a hit as a result of you know, the debate the other night. So how does Donald Trump need to position himself? Or what should we expect from Donald Trump? And what should we expect from the other contenders who feel like they have to respond to Donald Trump. Fred, I've given up. I've given up predicting <laughs> yeah, I mean, what I mean, to expect from Donald yeah. Trump a long time ago. I think I'm okay? exhausted just I think, yeah. you know, you may, you might as well just, you know, <laughs> throw it up in the air and see what lands. If, if, he's, if he's smart at this point, he should recognize he fell into a trap. Like, he, they, he should have known that they were going to ask him these kinds of questions, and he should have been more prepared. If I was his staff, I would say, look, we, we need to really think clearly about prepared what we're saying. Prepared in what way? In terms of special? specificity of certain issues because we didn't hear anything about policy ideas right. from him at all but expecting but, what well I mean you know Trump has a tendency to say sexist things racist things offensive things he has and so have other Republicans who were on that stage that particular night and he should have known better than to attack Megyn Kelly not because she's a woman not necessarily because she's Megyn Kelly but also because she works at Fox News and that is a place that many Republicans and that's happen another to interesting relationship I guess there was some some uh, thinking or feeling that perhaps you know he would feel like like, you know, Fox is his friend, you know, because he's a Republican and he's a conservative, et cetera. But there's a, an interesting relationship going on between yeah, that I'm, network I'm, and I'm, he. Frankly, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that that first debate was on Fox and that it was the Fox moderators asking those tough questions of every single Republican that was on that stage. Because, you know, had it been R.J. Tapper, who's the next moderator, he'd be accused of being uh, in cahoots with Democrats and being biased. They can't make that argument against Megyn Kelly, against Brett Baer, against Michael, against um, Chris Wallace. So they're, you know, he's so he's going for ad hominem attacks. So what kind of frustration might there be among the other contenders who thought, at least at this event this weekend, this three-day event this weekend, <laughs> that everyone would be on a level playing field? I'm using the words of Donald Trump earlier. You know, wanting to be on a level playing field. They've got this, you know, event where there is great support um, and interest in the party and these candidates. And here we go again. It's Donald Trump who's not even there. <laughs> who is upstaging everybody? Well, look, they just got to get on with what right. they're doing, right? They've got to they've got to focus on their campaigns, their message, deliver it, uh, go out and do more retail politicking, do their events, and I think that's what everybody is doing. If you sit down and just you know pop yourself some popcorn, pour yourself some wine, and watch the Trump telenovela, you're not going to get <laughs> elected. <laughs> and I think, I think, look, I just saw Mike Huckabee speak. You're going to have several other major contenders speaking this week. They're still behind. They have a job to do of selling themselves to Republican voters. I don't think they need to worry about Trump that much. They need to worry about themselves, what they're going to do, how to prepare for the next debate, because Trump is going to be Trump, and Jeb needs to be Jeb, and Marco mm -hmm. needs to be Marco, and everybody else simply yeah. needs to do their job and stay in their lane. Yeah, and here we thought this weekend we were going to be talking about, you know, the debate and how to prepare for the next one, and boom. Well, listen, we go. the good news is that we're, right. the, we're the red state gathering is happening it also has uh, a restaurant called southern art which i read has the best bourbon bar <laughs> in the country so at least okay. there's something that we can consult there all right thanks so much anna good to see you and jason as well good to Thank see you, you.